that's it. That's because I'm like sharks. the thing is right. Obviously, I, I think that you're supposed you're supposed to fade the north here. However, for me, yeah. every almost every Vega squadron match, they seem to do better than people's expectations. So I'm, so I'm essentially going for a gamble pick here, and they they have a shark logo. How can I not? You it's, know, it's partly because of all of all of Moses's shark gifts on yeah. um, on Twitter. You know me, I'm a shark man, so yeah. it doesn't help all these these shark animations. So uh, I'm kind of I'm blinded by the sharky poos, and I'm going to pick Vega, who will be starting on the T side of Inferno. And who knows, Vega Squadron, maybe they'll be even stronger, powered up by this fight or flight situation. Now we're in to the eliminations. And Nico looking to start things off well. Takes down Chopper. Chopper will be chopped. And Valdez has some good presence there. Very four position, and he'll get early information, but he'll die for it. So a 4v3 now for North, and the, they have no idea the bomb is actually by T-Pit. Hello. <laughs> okay. Just right walking then. into Neo. Neo? Nico. Nico is so close. No. Missing the ladder there. It's an interesting first round, Dan. No uh, ace for Nico. One versus three, none versus three. That is a solid start and finish for North in the pistol round. Very good round to win. MSL must be very happy he's in that best of three territory. High spirits are North in the beginning of this match. Now we need to choose the the Go TV picks for those of um, for those of them who are in Go TV. Dan, who do you fancy for the Go TV? Ooh, it's a good question. Um, I think I'd like to pick Kirby actually for this one. I think you know he, he delivered well yesterday. I think well Valde as well into that overtime also did a lot of great things. To be honest, you can't you can't really go wrong with uh, North. MSL when he picks up the AWP will be interesting as well. If you if too many picks, then pick one. Well, if you're an AWP, you can choose MSL. Okay, if, pick two. If pick you're two. a rifler, you're a, <laughs> pick Kirby then. Marvelous. For me on the on North CT side, I am going to pick Valde. That's my go TV pick recommendation. I think um, he's going to have a very important position to play quite literally for the team let's see how he does MSL surely he sees that tip of the gun there it's hard to tell with the out of the x-ray beyond the gun itself can be confusing for us but um, here we go the trades are here for North the gun well Hachi's in that short position actually he picks up for a 4 as well the crouch peak will be enough to ring the bell of MSL Ooh, hello. Now it's down to Kirby, and he's between two players. The bomb is also down once again. Kirby, my goodness. Looks very shaky. Can he get out of there? No! Caught by Archie. Very confusing rounds with the bomb just down in very weird places. And uh, to amend my GoTV pick, James, because I think we've been doing it all wrong. I, I choose Sliggy. Ooh, ah, oh, yes, go. I like that. <laughs> that is genius. Do you know what? That's actually... That's actually a very good pick, Dan. Yeah. Yeah. Is. Yeah. You caught me off guard. That's a. That is the. Um, <laughs> that's a checkmate right there. Observer Sliggy, leave it in his hands. I think. I think one of the. One of the best things about Sliggy is that he will show you the the build up of a round. It's up to you to translate it, but. You'll see the construction of a round from a T side, for example, and the activity of a CT side trying to. Look for information, take gambles, avoid risk, so on and so forth. Hello. Emerson gets one back. He doesn't go wide to peek the second players because he's buying time for his team to come around and get all of these frags. Nor comes straight back with another round. Yeah, that's okay. So this is really interesting because basically what we saw there is Vega ran a very very common anti eco. And I think if you've been watching their demos or some of the the demos of the CIS teams and so on, it's actually you know they're, it's, they're still running it very commonly where you just go up through mid, you try to go through arch and just wrap onto the A site. It seems to be very common, and we're seeing it a lot recently. I think North were just saying, well, this is a good bet that they'll probably do that. Let's just make a setup. And they had so many players to trade effectively. And boom, they did a great read from North and they will benefit from it. But we'll have a force fly coming in from Vega to, to respond to that. And perhaps they will be able to turn the tables once again. But it's Kirby, he's got an AK and he's going deep. Four smokes around the map of Inferno at the moment. When you see, if you see Rob Slater playing um, CT Apartments, he often has a smoke which sits on the balcony so you can see a T player's legs. But um, th it's always respected by the T opponent, but not many people throw that smoke at the moment. I think one other person has in this stage of the moment so far, but it's something to look out for. 
R.I.P. Kirby. He's done <laughs> significant damage though. Look at the health. There's there's more black in those health bars than there is gold. So we'll see whether North can finish them all off with ease. The AK, I believe, just collected by Crush. Crush always makes me think, that name always makes me think of Urien from Third Strike for any of those Street Fighter 3 fans out there. And Marcel going beyond the smoke. This might be a bad move. Oh. Indeed, there's players waiting. My god. Such a large gamble. They, uh, even though there's, they only had, uh, well, I mean, this is... The, the question is, how necessary was the gamble, and what are the implications if the gamble goes wrong? We'll just leave it there. Let you decide. 15 seconds, this bomb still has to go down, and Valde was exposed to two different places. North, I mean, these two rounds that they've lost have been very weird. That, I, I, didn't, I couldn't quite process what exactly happened in that, in that first round they lost, even at the very end. I was like, what, what, what exactly? I don't know what's going on right now. Why is this happening? And, and again, um, yes, they lost one player, and then after that, if you, if you creep through that smoke and you die, you have significant problems. I mean, you've already lost one rifle, and now you lose more than just that. I mean, I understand why he did it. I mean, he, they're looking for information and so you know because if he if, if he doesn't see anyone there or maybe he gets a 1v1 let's say because maybe there's just like one player there or something like that then okay sure you know he gets the information and they can run uh, players back to stack towards one site where they think it's most likely now because they were very much in the dark as to where the T's were going and they're thinking hey you know the T's have five players they picked up the AK they've got two AKs now you know we really need the, that information to know where to stack our players and so in making the information play that's actually what sealed the fate ironically for North instead so I think it, it was you know harmless in theory but it ended up being quite harmful in practice yeah I'd need to look at it back and see what other, what other utility they had and so on I don't really remember all the bits and bobs but here we are once again the um, we continue to trade rounds Yeah, it's really strange, isn't it? A very odd beginning to an Inferno game. That's a beautiful nade. Chopper might not agree, though, as the buy doesn't actually look bad for North. If you look at the fact that Vegas buy is, I mean, they've got an M4 and a Mac 10 in there, so actually, you know, it's quite good. But AK, UMP, M4, CZ, Deagle, that's that's not too shabby either for North if you place those guns well. And you know, Vega, if they're able to, if they're able to take away top mids. It could be really problematic for North. They'll have to take risks all over again to figure out what's going on. JR, you see him quickly look to the left and put in case somebody is close for a trade frag and somebody is close, but um, they will let them go to the point of no return, maybe. And now with Vega Squadron moving away from top mid, I think North are close enough to hear the sound cues MSL rotating towards the B bomb site. He's got no pop flash for the pool area, and in come Vega. Crush in the middle of his site on his own. And now we've got a late entrance from the rest. Maybe that was a security play in case of a stack. But Eek Ace, he's got a second one versus one. Now Tony Black is starting to move for the apartments. And JR is keeping them contained here towards the bomb site. But North realized what could be happening. And Nico and Valde are going back to the A site. Yeah, this looks great for North so far. 20 seconds to plant the bomb. It's going to have to run pretty much the whole way. So they can't really hide what's going on. North will have plenty of players there. Nico getting quickly onto the bomb site. Now he's on the... Oh, that's an important frag. Maybe there's enough space here for Chopper to plant with that frag. JR gets one in middle. They didn't expect him to come from middle. And that's given them the space to work with. In fact, the advantage as well. JR with 12 HP picks up one more frag. And now North are in a lot of trouble. How has it come to this? AZ has a kit that is very crucial. KRB is creeping through the apartments and so on. Is this just a container play? Is there an opportunity to play? Will they continue now? AZ's got to press forward. He's the one with the kit. Let's not forget. The bomb is in the side. They don't know quite yet, just yet. But it's so far ticked that I think it's time to fall back. How on earth are you going to win the round at this point? Tony Black now last man standing. And all the North players will fall. Oh no, James. This is... That's another round they should have won. This is... Um, it's weird. Yeah. It's weird. It's almost like people haven't quite woken up just yet. Yeah, they had a 5v3 um, after the, the way that the round opened up. And for some reason, they're sort of overstacking towards the B-bomb site in the first place. Then you get the big rotation coming in, and, and they're very un underprepared for Vega being sneaky. Well, I think 
Because they were so close top mid, I think they heard Vega running away. Vega didn't really, didn't think they did a good enough job of denying information towards top mid. So you saw that rotation. And then, but then Vega started moving into the site one by one. I, d I couldn't see what the guys on Banana were doing, but you had Crush. He was basically at second oranges. And as far as I could tell, unless somebody died and they didn't notice, like there was nobody else with him, he died. Then there were at least two players near the sandbags on Banana. One other guy moves in on his own. Meanwhile, we have, um, there was a player in apartments, but he was, he was, um, he wasn't deep in apartments near balcony. So, so I don't know what was going on there with, um, for Vega. I think that um, it wasn't the most beautiful play, but they have man managed to win that consecutive round and put North on USPs. Yeah, credit to JR. I mean, he played very well in that round, coming from mids and harassing from the apps. And indeed, the fourth white battle won by Vega. Now just cleaning things up with the Mac tens. And Hachi, look at him, he's found his way to CT spawn. So there's going to be some information for him. Oh. oh, there's one more player to be had. There's some reinforcements, the jumping back 10. And that is going to be that. Vega 4 and North 2. This is not the start that you want if you're North. It's one thing having a slow start. It's, it's one thing having a start where... It, it really shouldn't have been, by your own standards, it perhaps should have been a much better situation. Um, so, North, you know, the, the sort of silver lining there is that it's very, very early on, right at the beginning of this best of three series. So they don't have to worry too much about it. And, you know, North sh showed an enormous amount of resilience yesterday against Rogue. That, that game of Inferno, that <laughs> overtime against Rogue was incredible. Such a fun game of Counter-Strike to watch. So we know that North, when they get warmed up, they're going to be quite scary, but how long will that take? Waiting for things to normalize here on Inferno. It is a best of three, though. And I think all we will be happy about that. MSL, he's a person to top me, and he can get engaged with JR in the meantime. Nico with two, and Valde will take out Tony Black. That's a quick one. One versus four for Crush. And MSL will puncture him as well, like a football on a motorway. That is a round in the bag for North. No one is uh, dying, so they just need to replenish the odd grenades here and there. And Vega Squadron may have to have a rethink of that one because they did not get off that balcony at all. Yeah, it didn't seem to be any nades to stop the pit player from doing a lot of damage. Of course, that setup is even stronger if the pit player is actually playing sort of out of the pit. But North seem to have the info to know how to position correctly. And we'll see a fast round this time up. Oh, this is very fast from JR. You would expect him to catch someone with that kind of speed, but North will be very wary and they'll have three players there in case the worst were to happen. And somehow no one goes down. In fact, not even really a short exchange, just grenades. Normally you see a smoke like this thrown by a CT side to the half wall, but I suppose JR threw it into the flames in case the CTs were going to push behind the barrel position at which he would be exposed. And it's also, especially when you're a sniper, it's really hard to see through flames at pretty much all distances. The Vega Squadron will claim the banana area. Two players remain here for North. Kyobi's in a faster rotation position, but it seems he is heading towards library for the time being. Valde and Nico playing. What? Okay, Chopper on the high ground for Sandbags. That looks really bad from MSL's POV. AZ sees numerous plays and Kyobi's quick towards B. Yeah, that's a very brave team from AZ, but that could be a huge difference maker, especially now that Kyobi goes down. AZ needs to win another 1v1, and that's exactly what he's going to do. Taking down Chopper. AZ has been incredible on the B side of the map in this tournament so far for North and he's really keeping them alive in this one. He's got no right to be alive. Two of his teammates have died around him but he's still there trying his best to anchor this bomb site. He's got 19 health and there, his help is very far away. He has to do all of this by himself. He's Incomes. taking an off angle. Oh, they lined up for him but he wasn't able to get a frag. Tony Black doing the job. And that leaves Nico on a very long rotation of the AK. He's got full utility. So what does he choose to do? Do sorry. Does he know there's an AWP in place? Does he try to use the smoke? He could jump through a flashbang, but it might not blind him for long. So this is a big ask for Nico, and that is why, Mr. Jr. Monsieur Jr. with a shot straight to the face.
And uh, that is and North back in uh, a problematic scenario. They haven't won a consecutive round yet. Instantly reset. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you know the way the North, or rather, sorry, Vega played these rounds. You, you know they're trying to they're creating this awkward scenario for North because. Vega, they're not like really working the map a huge amount. You know, we had a, they wanted to start off very aggressively and they wanted to make something very simplistic work. And to do that is to create a situation where North doesn't have as many opportunities to create kills in the round, to get information in the rounds. No, Vega, they push towards Banana, they take Banana, they delay, and then they just execute into the bomb site and just try to win fights. So very few opportunities for North to correct if the battles don't go their way, which they did not. And Kirby will be sent to an early grave in this round, and perhaps it was inevitable. Ill-equipped, of course, the CTs. Tony Black having his way with Nico's knees. Nice. Always a good place to stand on anti-eco. I like how slow Vega were towards the B bomb site as well because when you saw the first player charge out for the CTs, he saw two, maybe three players. So that's a lot of information for the CT. So they thin them out slowly, Vega Squadron. But especially for those of you at home where, as can often happen, everybody goes banana. It's a good place to stand outside apartments. You can see the feet of a player on the balcony as well as anyone coming down the stairs. 6-3 to three in favour of Vega Squadron, and it's Vega with a tactical timeout. They know North are back on the uh, back on the bye, and some of the pushes towards A have been a problem. Top mid and balcony pushes, so perhaps there's some discussion about that. What have we seen from North so far, and how can we get around it? Yeah, it's it's been a really weird game so far. I think you know Vega. It's cool f uh, because Vega. They, as I mentioned, they're playing really simple rounds, and you know if you have a team that's very confident, it's it's really beneficial. This is something that you know the French teams. One of the reasons why the French teams were so scary is because their individual skill was insane, and they were effectively creating a s style of play where you have to really be able to match them individually in some situations and. You know, you can't get as much out of your tactical play in these sort of fast round situations. But speaking of which, the HEs will go quite well here for North. I like the delayed HE there. You may think that a position's safe, then another late HE comes in, and you can see how much damage they've done. Chopper and Crush down to very low HP. Ooh, just trying to walk in there. This is surely not going to go too well for RG either. Indeed, Valde ready for that one. And they're left with three weakened players on Banana, James. Yeah, that seems to be a, a hard sell towards the A site, which hasn't really changed much of what North are doing. Bomb thrown on the floor on Banana, but it will not be heard, I don't think, because no one is playing first oranges. Chopper, is he going back to sell something towards the A bomb site once again? Because he's on a very long rotation while this is going on making his way towards apartment zone. Just keep an eye, you can see number two on the radar there. I think Vega are either waiting for somebody to pick them towards B, or pay, perhaps catch someone on the rotation if Chopper can get something done. And now North uh, may be starting to ask questions towards that B-bomb site. Where is Valde? Because Chopper's just walked past him. Oh, he's on that short position, actually. Here we go. So. Grenades into both sides. Mimes are going towards the B-bomb site though, and the uh, bomb has still not been spotted. Chopper has picked off a player, but the bomb's got to rotate past Valde. Valde has a superior angle. He's got this on lock. He'll hit his footsteps, and this will be easy. And there is the round, 15 seconds, and uh, Vega trying to do a lot, but not really getting much of anything done in this round once again. Yeah, it's, it's one of those situations where you pick a strategy where if, if it doesn't go well, <laughs> when you try to execute it, you're not like the round's basically over. There's, there's nothing good you can do after you've lost two players, a lot of utility, and you also lost a lot of health on the remaining players, and you have no map control. Like at that point, it's like, well, it's you know, it's not really going to go well, is it? So, it's uh, it will be interesting to see if North can play a smooth game from this point. I'm wondering if if Vega Squadron have seen something in a demo, some kind of. Like if there's a certain timing where North maybe have two people on short and nobody in pit or or something where they're not paying too much attention to balcony because first we had the the, the balcony burst play which didn't happen 
Then you've got the balcony raw peak play with two players, not one but two, which is hard to trade because of how tight a, a choke point it is. Yeah. And that didn't work out either. But so they, they, there seems to have been a fixation on that in the short term, and um, it really hasn't gone their way. It it's, hasn't even been close. Yeah, it's it's quite cool um, from a rotations perspective because you know if you if you're putting that pressure on Banana, the expectation is that the CTs aren't just going to sit in deep positions on the A side because they've got to get info. You know, if they can confirm that there's there's no one top mid, well then they can say, oh well, then it, ha it, it very likely is going to be a B play. Um, so it's it's. I don't think you expect for there to be two people just staring, <laughs> staring right in your face when you come out the balcony. So, so I, can, I think I can see, you know, from multiple angles. I think you know why that, why that could be a smart thing to do. But unfortunately, sometimes in practice, what is you know, smart in theory can end up being very dumb in that instance, um, the way that it looks at least. And for Vega, it definitely fell flat, unfortunately for them. And they didn't build, build up too much bank in some of these rounds. Yes, I. I wonder, I feel like, I don't know, it's been, I mean, it's been an unusual start to Inferno, but I feel like Vega have had some squandered opportunities where they've given rounds to North of late. But sometimes if you try a tactic and something has changed since you thought you'd have a hole in the defences and so on, it's just not going to work. But they have, they, they will have a buy in their next round. 6-4 to four to Vega at the moment. So we'll have a buy in the next round. So we'll have to see um, what else they have in the bag. And I'm sure there's a reasonable level of depth to that bag. Indeed. Of strategy and tactics. I mean, I suppose, you know, it, it evens out because I think, you know, North will feel similarly that they gave away some rounds in which they shouldn't have. And in reality, you know, they had that 5v3 with, I think it was two of the players were really weak on the Vegas side as well, in which they lost. And that looks like very unusual. So, you know, if, if North had won that round, Vega would have been on a full save. And I think the game would look very different. But Vega, instead, you know, they they won. They kept being in the position to keep, keep you know, dictating the pace. And that seems where so far they have been strong. But it seems as though North have finally found a way to control them. And 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 uh, nice to start looking at the screen. There. <laughs> I just reading it says technical pause game. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, what, what does it mean? Yeah, well, there there have been some um, some things that the devs have been working on. Yeah, yeah that's true. So. The sound yeah, stuff. we'll see. I think it is. It looks like a similar thing from what we've yeah. seen in the game. I do wonder if it's exclusive to Inferno, or if it. Some people have stated that it seems to happen more on Inferno. Yeah. It seems very sort of anecdotal that. So. But yeah, they do the test where basically everyone runs into middle, and each to, to make sure everyone can hear each other. You know, they they take it one, one time at a time to basically run around everybody else to make sure that everyone can hear that player. And then they just keep doing that until until it works, <laughs> basically. <laughs> and uh, Dan, I spent so much money on these souvenir skins this week. I think I spent over three hundred pounds. Why are you doing this? On, 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 I thought, thought you were past this life. Well, at least the, 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 the I mean, the main issue, the first issue, right, was buying loads of boxes. That's the that's the problem. Well, they were five pounds. I remember the days of the cobblestone being like thirty pounds each. That was that was that was when it was bad. <laughs> five pounds is like all right. Let me buy a hundred pounds of boxes and see what happens. Max Evans, of course. And you're still dis disappointed at the end. Max of it, so. Yeah. So, so, so I was like, let me just buy. Pounds. Let me just buy what I want. And it's, and it's like I could wait until there are normal drops and so on, but they'll be so rare. I think. I was like, let me just buy it because I'm scared. You know, it's like a scarcity thing. Oh, there's not many available. I must buy it. It's like with the with the sneakers and things. So I just bought it. Like whatever. So I bought the jewel berettas. Um, I bought the the Krieg, and I scratched all the stickers off, which made people sad. But but they they look at it as value. I'm I, I look at it as enjoyment. So I don't yeah. care. I don't care what the value difference makes because I'm never going to sell it regardless. Yep. Um, <clears throat> and the racing. I forget the name of the car. Lancia, I think it's from the Lancia car. Um, I don't think my cars. Me neither, so but they, um, it's like the, the Martini branding. I was talking to uh, some of the Italians about it, and uh, it is it's beautiful, man. I, just, I think it's one of my favorite skins in the game, and I use the Krieg. There's nothing... It's funny, if, if you use the AWP a lot, 
and you use the Krieg and you scope in and just one shot someone in the face. It's so yeah. satisfying. Yeah, yeah. It's more satisfying than running running around with a scout and like flicking someone for me oh, at least. Know. It went in the face. Yeah. Like if I go oh, if I run up top mid on Mirage and just one shot the guy who's in the windows of AWP because I know they're going to be mad as well and that makes me happy. So, I know yeah. they're going to be mad. I, th I don't think anything can replace the eagle headshots and the scout headshots. Lancia yeah. Delta? And also AK-1 tabs also very satisfying. So I got that skin. I bought the MP7 Fade as well. And uh, yeah, that, that, those are expensive, man. But I need the the AWP Archeron, Acheron, Acheron from Nuke. They're doing another test round right now, guys, just to update you. So I need the AWP uh, Acheron. I don't know if there's factory new ones, but if there were minimal wear ones on the market, they're not on the market right now, I don't think. Oh, yes, there are. 120, bloody hell. Um, but with that one, it's kind of like randomly generated each one, and so you need the skulls in the right place, man. The skulls have got to be on point, as well as as well as wear. So uh, I'm going to start looking at these and trying to find one, man. So much money, Dan. Help me. I can't. I can't Can help you. Give me you. five quid. I think the. I think you just need to empty your bank account. Just just keep buying stuff, and then when there's no money left, the problem will stop. <laughs> there's one with a Dren sticker on. Don't often see him sniping. But I'll be honest, guys. I'm going to scrape his stickers off. Don't be mad. Don't be mad. I'm scraping the stickers, baby. What would you put if you had... At least on an AWP, had, I'll leave one. If there's a nice one on the scope, I'll leave that one there. If you had a James Bardolph sticker, but only one, where would it go? Would it even go on a gun? Well, where else could it go? Well, I mean, you could just, you could just not put it on anything. You could just have it in your inventory. No, I'd have to put it on something. Where would um, it okay, if I had a sticker... I can't put stickers on Golden knives. Golden James Bardolph sticker. Do you have an idea? You put it on a deagle. Um, I don't know actually what I put on. It would, it would either be, it would either be a deagle or an AK, probably. What was that railgun video you were watching? Oh yeah. Yes, yeah, so you should, t you should yeah. tell people to look that up. It was real. Awesome. I read. Yeah, I, I, I sort of, I retweeted it. So. And where can and where can they find your Twitter account then? So yeah, so, <laughs> so basically James is talking about a video where someone I don't know how they did it, but they just put like um, a Quake Champions like railgun on. Like in a like like into, into CSGO, CS. and it's this guy just bunny hopping around, just railing people. It's quite funny. It's amazing. Um, it's uh, if you it's at EDK Esports and check my timeline, you'll see the retweet. Um, it's if quite you, funny. If you're a fan of North, there's actually an Asheron um, AWP with MSL's signature on the scope. Relevant. Might be worth it. Might be a worthy investment. It's like 130 pounds, I think, right now. Mm. If MSL becomes you know the most popular man in the game. Yes, well, you've got a long way to go, uh, this major, to, to sort of reassert themselves in that way. Because, I mean, even though they just had that great highlight at DreamHack Stockholm, unfortunately for them, no one's going to care, James, because people are going to care about the, the people in the playoffs of the major and whoever lifts the trophy in the major. Damn. So, and, you know, that's like the major is, is uh, so it eclipses um, everything else. And also it depends on how the performance goes in the major. Obviously, if they are not able to be successful in this best of three against Vega, that's going to be a really huge question mark. They're going to, I mean, to be a top level team, consistency has to be a part of the process. And you know, if you look at the consistency of, you know, teams like FaZe and Astralis, of course, you know, you can, you can see, you can see a team that just refuses to die unless it's, uh, you know, they at least get to the semi-finals of everything. So, so North need to be one of those teams to, I think, really feel, feel successful. One tournament doesn't make it, unfortunately, but it's a great start and it's a good show of things that are possible. And it's a great reference point for confidence to get there, to get to that consistency. And I think they can. I think they've got a great team and it's been really cool watching their, them over time and how they've evolved. Danish CS is crazy, James. You know there's like 5 million people in Denmark, yeah, they've got like three incredibly good teams, they've got some of the best in-game leaders and like some of the best players. Yeah, they've got like a population of around 5 million people. What's, what is that about? Population of a few chats. We'll try to figure it out while we go to a break, while um, people work on this sound thing. So stay tuned. We shall be back with the remainder of this game on Inferno. See you soon.
Yeah. You can't say anymore. We're, we're, we're back. We're back. Yeah, we're live now. Can't stop. Hello, we talk live. about that. Uh, we're yeah, live we're now. live. We're live. Yeah. Cool. So we were just talking about what we used to do before broadcasts, as, right, like right as the countdown was starting before we went live. I was trying to buy a one more souvenir skin, like one more souvenir skin. But because I've bought so many things on the Steam market recently and deposited multiple times, I think that my bank have frozen my bank accounts and my PayPal got frozen. That's and so I tried to add another card and then because it's a new card, Valve won't let me do, well, they let me deposit, but it won't let me buy it. That's good. So I, now I can't, I can't buy it. And I have to verify, but I can't do the verification charges because my bank account's frozen. Anyway, six to four, the Vega Squadron have five MAC-10s. We've seen this round before. They like to go towards the B bomb site. Will they be successful? However, that is the question. North may be expecting this. Three people ready for the two. And so takes such AR, leaving Crush with 19 HP. Perhaps this is somewhat telegraphed. Nice. <laughs> I like how I like how um, AZ comes in to rescue Kirby, and Kirby's like, "I'm out." <laughs> he, just, he just leaves, and then poor AZ dies. He's like, "I got AZ's like, I got this. I got this." Well, that was uh, that was a fast one, and that is that's a round that you know you can indeed expect from Vegas Squadron. I think those shenanigans are like pretty known for, from Vegas Squadron now. Like if you know that their money is going to be in that sort of a place, it's a round you can expect. We've seen North already, I think, anticipating similar plays. We'll see, though. Now that the AKs are back out for Vega, whoa. How, hold that fort. What the orbs out from the sun? He's gonna get a kill. Try to get a kill very early on here. Won't go his way, and that's a close call for Vega Squadron. They've only got three smokes and two molotovs, James. They don't have much play with this round. Slightly too deep. Otherwise, Vega may have been in trouble. The numbers game heading towards the B bomb site. They were here, these players jumping. Like, I'll be seeing one of watches AZ for the traders there. They've got one smoke. Hutchie can smoke off. No smoke? Interesting. Well, it's, I guess, on the floor somewhere. Oh, maybe he was... I was looking at the wrong part of the radar. Yeah, Never mind. Well, either way, it's it won't be easy for North in the 3v3. They have a full utility and kits, which is great, but they can't really afford to buy properly if, this, if they lose all their guns this round. So there's definitely some problems to be had here. And that's a beautiful shot there from Tony Black. Lines it up, and I'm still in a horrible place, and this has gone very, very very wrong here for North. Once again, we're seeing so many rounds where it kind of looks like North just get caught off guard one time in a round, and it's fatal. It's actually completely fatal. The fact that both the B players, you know, Kirby and AZ, just get caught out in these open duels against three players. You know, credit to Vega Squadron knowing the right kind of approach, but you know, I think Kirby went out there first. I think it was Kirby first, and he gets caught, he kind of gets caught off guard. And then Nazi's like, "Well, I'm committed now. I have to try to trade." And he's good for the first one, but then there's two players with Vega with good spacing to trade onto him. So, and then the round is just simply won. You know, North they, they can't allow the rounds to go this way. And they need to try to slow things down against Vega and just starve them out, perhaps. Creeping up top mid, our Vega squadron. They won't find much. Nico and Valde towards that short position, the pit position. Now, at what point do North start to wonder? Because everything's quite everywhere. They don't hear the presence of Vega squadron. And as you can see, Kirby is assuming that this area is compromised until he sees otherwise. And soon he will know. Straight in the head. Won't spot the second player, however, JR. So maybe JR can get the jump on him. Moving to speedway now is Kyabi. In the meantime, Chopper and Crush lining up for grenades towards the B-bomb site. It seems JR and Kyabi will circle each other. Tony Black may be offering something towards A. How interesting. <laughs> wow. Okay, that's a problem for the B players. Oh my god, it's an AWP as well, James. This could not go wrong in any, in any more grotesque of a way. Now Amistel is alone, he's going to worry about the AWP as well, misses the first shot, how can he do this? He's just stuck behind the pillar, down to 5 HP, absolutely crushed. Kirby will come in, it's a good first frag, but he's been spotted, he's down to 18, and doesn't anticipate. Why has he got his knife out? I don't know, James. Valde is there to tra uh, trade him out, though, but there's two AWPs post-plant on B. That is perhaps the strongest way to handle this situation. North don't even really have utility, and he smokes to stop this. Oh, well, there is one. And there's a forward smoke as a counter. This is very messy here so far for North. 
Cross switching out to the M4 as they come closer. They might be able to do this. They're swarming the bomb site now and just going for the hold in the smoke. This is very messy. Knife comes out. The slices are in. That stops the defuse from happening. And that bomb is too far ticked, but he's done it with the knife. What the hell is going on, James? We're not even in overtimes and it's already mad. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> what is going on? What is going on? Oh, well, that's such a weird round. Like the way that Kirby and JR just sort of played ring around the rosy there. But let's see. There, so I feel like there are at least three players alive <laughs> oh after God. Kirby frags the guy. And even even here, I thought JR would. Um, I mean, let's see what the money's like for the T side. He prioritized taking the weapon out of North's hands, which you can respect. But now he's got no AWP. But they are on eco, so perhaps it was all worth it. North with nothing to fight with. This game of Inferno continues to be bizarre. This is the weirdest game. And we've seen the tide of Infernos. Okay, maybe those are weirder, but in a different way, James. It's all very weird. Well, they'll be moving into the stack, which is fine, as long as you use the correct utility. They've only got one Molotov left, though, that speed, that said. So let's see if they can hit the shots, and so far, so good. Only one frag going away lazy, but not enough damage to really hazard a chance at the at the round win, so Kirby will be annoying, but only so much he can do as he goes airborne. A nine of five. I wonder what the the desk makes of this. Can't imagine. It's uh maybe maybe they can't make anything of this. <laughs> it's very strange. For Vega, it's, it's amazing. They've they've really come out on the right side of this. And... It's down to 5M4s. And not the best situation on utility or kits for North. Right then, let's see if a uh, Vega squadron have a round number 10 in them. Is 10 rounds enough? Obviously, well... I think we can expect North to have a a stronger T T stronger T rounds in general, not in terms of score, but in terms of execution and so on. So will they be comfortable with ten rounds? Not well, ten rounds is the most they can for anyway at this point. MSR is bowling now towards that arch position with Nico in the team. Smoke's off, Tony Black coming around the side, and Tony Black will leave him face down on the floor. That is an open A bomb site. The rest of the team smoked off. JR having a look. May have spotted a player there, but he is exposed to the library. Probably saw the library player as well. Where are the other two CTs? The five v four here for Vega. It doesn't look too bad. Their setup is quite nice, accounting for pretty much everything here. And all the CTs spilling through one toe point. It's very difficult to get past that. They try to smoke their way through it, try to create a tunnel of smokes, but it's just not worked even, even a little bit. Just Kirby left in the 1v5. It's looking like the 10-5 for Vega. And indeed, there it is. JR will secure it. And this has been a half of complete catastrophe for North. There's been multiple opportunities for them to have a much better half. And it just seems like everything's going wrong, James. Everything. Yeah, so it, I mean, we've seen so much Inferno um, this week so far. But I'm not really sure what to make of that half. But uh, apart from the score, the score is 10 to 5 in favor of Vega Squadron. And let's not forget, North won the pistol round. Of course, they were reset instantly and then reset again after winning a uh, round. A very unusual start to Inferno. Yep. If anything, though, though we know that North, uh, they have a, you know, a comeback or two in them. You know, yesterday, of course, coming back from well, being down 14 to 8 against Rogue, bringing it back to overtime and eventually eventually winning it. <laughs> we had quite a few overtimes there. And just, uh, just get that pistol under your belt and all can be forgiven. This chopper gets a drive-by shot there onto AZ. You've got to be careful uh, as a CT. There's no real good answer, I think, as far as the CTs are concerned when it comes to opening up this pistol round. You want to take fights, but it can go very wrong very quickly. That's a great position from Chopper, though. Very forward. He's got to just make it out of there. And he will. Gets another frag as well. He's causing all kinds of problems. Kirby and MSL moving up towards the B-bomb site. JR falling back. He's got Tony Black in the back as well. 
top of bottom mid. Nico moving through to the apartments backwards. And Hachi on A. Again, it's an unusual situation. And if MSL rotates, who knows? Nico's about to see Chopper though. This is getting super weird. Use a little bit of that Frank is running out of bullets and he can't survive. MSL now bottom mid and Hutch is going to have a look from top as the rotation is coming in towards the B bomb site. All kinds of nonsense is going on. Down goes the bomb. Now Nico's got 15 HP. JR was moving down banana, but he will start to slow with Tony Black move top mid with Hutchy. And Hutchy will finish off the job. So Vega win the pistol round. Now can they avoid getting reset, avoid walking through smokes on banana and uh, hold out for a very strong position? Yeah, yeah. No kidding. I mean, it, it, it could be. If everything goes according to plan against the force by a cheeky 13 to 5 scoreline to play from. And that means only three rounds required then to win the map, which will be pretty upsetting for North, putting them on the back foot immediately in this best of three. I think I think the vast majority of people I think I think you'd be crazy to I mean obviously we you know we've seen some predictions go the way of Vega due to their performances, but still it, it would just be so crazy for Vega to be able to best North in a best of three, best of one, sure, but either way, we'll let the action do the talking here as we look to see if North can find a way to bust open the Vega defense on this four spy round of theirs. Vega do have players at the bottom of Banana for a fast flank, so that is dangerous. It's Tony Black as well. You know, he's good for it with that MP9. North's turn for a balcony burst, but it's got more styling and profiling than Vega's attempt, even though they are worse equipped. Starting to move down. Chopper's got the cover, sees a shadow position. Nice spread from him of the MP9. Looking for kill number four, but Crush will take that one away. I think Tony Black is one of my favorite nicknames in Counter Strike. Something with Goose Breeder. I think Goose Breeder is one of the most awesome Goose nicknames. Breeder in Counter-Strike, but Tony Black's a pretty good one as well. I always thought well that it was a good name. Yes! As well. Always reminded me of Deus Ex. Who was that? Was it Daedalus in Deus Ex? Daedalus, yeah. I, just, I feel like he could have called Daedalus well then. Daedalus is a mythological thing as well, I always forget. Yeah, that's true. From where it is from. I guess it ruined everything else. But we have a fast round here on Banana from both teams. Is it from Bill and Ted's Adventure? <laughs> Okay, then maybe that's your mythology, but it is not mine. Tony Black pushing forward. Oh, he's going to be loving it. They just walk straight into him. He'll take all the body shots. And he's going to have a lot of money, James. He's going to have a lot of money now. 16 and 8 for him. He's been playing well. Chopper's been playing well. It's been amazing watching Chopper, actually. And some of the, the moments that he's given us, you know, particularly against Big on Train, for example. There was that 3k he made. Uh, coming back into one of the sites that allowed them to eventually win that match, which to me blew my mind how the level that he displayed to achieve that. So, Chopper's definitely one to keep an eye on, no doubts. They're 13 5, James. They need three rounds, and an author out on the first map, out on their asses. The AK's up for North. Will there be a flash over this smoke? They are a meticulous team north, but they're happy to... They're confident that there's going to be no one else around the bottom of Banana. They continue to pursue with um, three players in tow. Valde and AZ concentrating on apartment for it for the moment. Oh, nice attempt. It wasn't as deep as north. And now they're being forced away. Oh, very interesting indeed. I like the pre-fire from north. Multiple man pre-fire, because they know the CTs are coming back. Faker making it loud, and that's going to exhaust a fair amount of utility from North. They're going to have to get some more flashes up, perhaps, if they're brave enough to look here again. In the meantime, moving towards a short position with Arch smoked off. I love that detail from Vega, the retake of Top Banana. They don't actually place players there, but North have to be suspicious. Like, North are coming back to Banana now, and they have to check stuff, because there could be CTs playing sandbags, and they could be trying to play, uh, they could be trying a setup. So it does slow North down. You can see they have to check everything again. They're walking, 35 seconds. North are a team that can play pretty fast as well. Oh my goodness, seems like there was a gap in the smoke. Tony Black now alone with the MP9. The spray comes in, can't get too much from it. Goes for another try. A lick of damage or two onto AZ, but that's about it. And Vega on the retake game, and it's perhaps a, a question of getting damage in at this point. 
Yeah, they've kept their SMG so they can buy regardless in the next round. So is this a question of containment? They don't really have the uh, any real estate at all towards the banana position and they are moving away to hold on to this, which may give them an extra buy in fact if they just hold on to these weapons. So let's see what they choose to do. I mean, they can expect North, because they've got no control towards CT, to go down Banana. So I guess it is going to be uh, an elimination attempt. Now, you see where AZ and Kyabi are. The T's don't need to go beyond this position. So plenty of people will just run down Banana and just keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going. But you should think about where the limit is. They limit their risk by not going beyond the banana. As you can see, they're all hiding in the corner, but MSL is keeping an eye on things just in case the CTs push up. So they really do uh, dot the I's across the T's north. But that's something to think about is at what point can you stop running away from the bomb site and not overexpose yourself? No one likes overexposure, especially not the police, James. So double ops come out for Vega Squadron. And this could be maybe the the trick that they need to shut down North straight away. North going for banana control once again, but Vega not wants to give it up. They've got three players there ready to trade out. Nico very fast. Will he get traded? Yes, two players from the sandbags position, not expected. MSL wants to follow it up with the Molotov, but he can't run through the CT incendiary. And this aggressive setup in the apartments is causing quite the chaos here for both sides as Vega now look to stabilize. But it's going to be difficult. Crush alone with the AWP with an onslaught of dangerous players. And there's nothing he can do, it seems, up to JR and Tony Black. Behind a smoke grenade. They've got two smokes of their own though, but one question is, do they want to invest the AWP? Well, that's uh, going to change everything. MSL picked off. I was going to offer a suggestion that if they can't find an opening from where they are. Maybe they'll choose not to go for it. Now the bomb is ticking. Tony Black's the man with the defuse kit. It seems Joe will stay close. Are they going to go all the way with this JR and Co? If they save these two weapons, they could buy in the next round. If they don't, they might not. That should be it, really. JR's in the red now. He's gone. And Tony Black's running onto the site. So that was really awkward for Vega. And the bomb is so ticked that I, I think at the point where they're starting to move in, they have such a small percentage of fragging both players and defusing the bomb. Yeah. I don't know if they knew where both players were, so I don't know if there was indecision, but, um, oh, ignore me, they are able to buy, including the AWP, so I miscalculated. But uh, that did look like a, a laborious retake attempt. Maybe it's just a confidence thing sometimes. Maybe it's just like, you know what? It's like they just, they just have that feeling in their gut, maybe, that they can win any situation that's even very, very marginal. Which which could be, you know, which in the face of it, not, like not a great thing, but maybe in the long term it's great for Vega. We'll have to see how it turns out. And that initial mid aggression will go about as well for, for MSL as it's, uh, or rather for JR as it did MSL, getting absolutely nothing. And top banana taken by North once again. And Vega had four players ready to come in for this. Defense, not even a retake just yet. Chopper straight through the smoke, gets himself one, darts back out of it into safety and then back into the frying pan. And he will be doing all kinds of damage right now as nothing goes the way of North here. Only with one kill and just stopped at the front door. Oh, that is stunning from AZ, but can he get anything else? He's got 25 health. Plenty of time, but 25 health. AZ now threatening the plants and he'll be shot in the back. Chopper will take him out, and Vega, two rounds away from winning map one. Somewhat scary towards the end there. They could, um, you yeah, know, that was two man spray down was avoidable. But this was a great re pick from Chopper. But even before he does this, he sees more players coming up. But you see, he doesn't fight to the death. He knows he has advantages. He can fall back, he can reload, go for the pop flash again. But uh, just before they, they line up, you're looking for a trade frag situation, maybe with the guy running through the smoke once his teammates engage, but there we are. It was scary for a moment, but Vega are in, a, are in a pretty strong position. This, you could almost consider this match point for Vega Squadron, it's 14 to 7, but um, there will be, will be no money for North if they lose this round and don't plant the bomb. So if I'm the guy on the Vega side, I'm saying like, this is, this is our match point now. If we take all the weapons away, we win this match. Big moment, a pivotal moment indeed. I agree. So much potential here for Vega. Will they be fearless or will that potential get to them? Will they obsess over it? Who knows? 
JL looking for a good peek here and keeping it passive, our Vega, so no you know, fearless brave play is really required. Oh, hello. Good tag on to Kirby. It's always nice to throw a shot into that wall. Nothing else presents itself, and for JR, he'll get a lot of damage. Not really threatening B, but Faker aren't overreacting. That HE would be quite something this time. With Kirby on 33 HP, <laughs> waiting for a peek from the CT side. He knows that they're not coming his way, so maybe there'll be a faster re-peek than we expect. The bomb is still deep in Banana, and JR is walking, I think, towards uh, A, down Speedway. North not in a position to hear him regardless. Chopper, Crush, and Hachi basically all deep towards short. This is going to be a very long rotation for Vegas Squadron. It's a good smoke there defensively from Tony Black, but Kirby too fast around Paul finds the angle in time. JR, can he find something before his teammates come in? In fact, they are not moving a muscle. And yeah, indeed, just hold on to what they have. North of one another round towards that B bomb site. And do you wonder if Vega will begin to mix things up on Banana? Will they try to be more aggressive and go for a full, you know, take like all the way deep? I'm liking those retake smokes that they've been throwing, but they've they've never pushed behind them, which I find I think is quite interesting. What do you make of it, James? I don't know what I make of it, Dan. Perhaps it's, it's something where well, eventually they'll they'll just do it every so often. It looks it always looks the same. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's always important to do. Another thing that uh, lurkers will do as well if they're deploying grenades. She got one guy outside a B bomb site. Do the same grenades, make it look the same. Then all of, all of a sudden there are four people there, and everything goes bad. It's quite stylistic of Vega too. You don't really. I don't. I'm trying to think of any teams I've seen play in Inferno that do it as commonly as Vega have been. I can't really think of anyone else. Definitely playing their own style of Counter Strike to an extent. All righty then. Here. Yeah. Molotovs, four hundred dollars for a T side, six hundred for a CT side. So these investments of banana are very expensive for the CT. The bomb spotted. How long will they fight for here, Vega? They have the corner. Chopper and Tony Black falling back. Charles always a good one to watch as well. Now North, are they going for a fast play towards the A-bomb site? Chopper's rotated back towards library and Arch has been smoked off and it seems there is a fast focus from North on short, which is covered in flames at the moment. On the wrong side with the Fama so close but so far from the frag but it's his teammate Hachi to finish things off. Crushed from above with the UMP goes overlooked and he will spring onto the opponents and that's 15 rounds for Vega. Looks like it ain't no thang for Vega right now. Standing in the smoke using his teammates for distraction. He was up there somewhere. You can see him re-emerge from the ether. And that is match point for Vega Squadron. However, it's not the one we were talking about earlier, so North have a buy in this round because of the successful round that they had of late. MSL on the Galil once again, enabling his teammates with the four AKs. They've got the utility. What is their plan on this occasion? Three people towards B for the CT side. And it will be an exchange of presents to fight for presence on Banana. Yeah, the Banana's area has been quite important. And wow, oh. that is not what you want to see oh. if you are oh if you are North right now. Chopper with the MP9, that's the perfect weapon for the job to finish off these softened up players. And that's the bomb at the feet of the CTs. This could not have gone worse here for North in this round. MSL in no position to trade. No position to trade whatsoever. Valde's got to put in work in the meantime. AZ's coming in for support. There are some flashbangs around that smoke on Banana. There are fights all over the place. There's the Lurk. That was the big gamble. The Molotovs have forced some of the CTs back, but Chopper is still here with that fast firing MP9. Jumping accuracy as well, so who knows what kind of parkour we'll see here. Won't be necessary. MSL runs to his doom. And it's only AZ left to try and stop Vega from taking this one to Mirage. 
And there it is. Crush will take down AZ and Mirage. It will be a fast one for Vegas Squadron. And considering how the first half went, perhaps that was highly indicative of it. They got a 10-5 and North, everything seemed to go wrong. North had a lot of opportunities, James, but something, something seems wrong.